Arise, queens. This is the All Queens Army, where women are provided with the tools you need to overcome your fears, face your flaws, and experience breakthroughs as you develop self-esteem so strong you emanate royalty. Now, for your host and commander of the All Queens Army, Breezy Time. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the All Queens Army Podcast. This is your girl, your host, Breezy Time. I am here today with another dope episode for the Queens. Yes, honey, so excited to be talking to the Queens again. You Queens know you are so near and dear to my heart. I absolutely enjoy talking to the Queens and being in your ear because you Queens are in my heart. Now, today is Monday. So you know what that means, okay? Today's episode is from our Motivate Her segment. So I am going to be motivating the shit out of you, okay? So if you're new around here and this is your first time listening to the All Queens Army podcast, every Monday I drop an episode from our Motivate Her segment. And what that segment is, is just me and you. It's just me telling you a story about something that I've either experienced or another person's experience that I've been that have has been shared with me and talking about it and how we can all learn from it and some of the things that we can do to uh, help us evolve and help us grow and help us change into the queens that you know the creator sent us here to be, honey. So, that is what we do around here on Monday. And we do it on Monday cuz Mondays is a tough day, y'all. Monday is the day that some of us struggle to get out of bed. Mondays is the day that sets the tone for the week. So, we motivate each other around here on Mondays, queens. So, before we get started and jump into t- today's topic, I'm going to ask as I always ask, and I feel like some of y'all not listening to me, okay? But let me just be let me just go ahead on with it. Can you guys please subscribe to the All Queens Army podcast, okay? You can go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, YouTube, or SoundCloud, okay? Click on those apps on your phone and type in All Queens Army. When we pop up, hit subscribe. If you can't find it or you don't know how to navigate through the apps on your phone, go to allqueensarmy.com, click on subscribe, and there will be a link for every single platform that the podcast is on. Click on whichever link you prefer and then hit subscribe. Okay? Thank you, queens. Anyways, so today's topic, we're going to be talking about limiting beliefs, closed minds, and million-dollar resourcefulness. Okay? Um, That's what we're going to be talking about today. I know that sounds a little clunky, but, you know, hang in there with me. I definitely have a story to tell you. And today I'm going to flip the episode a little bit and I'm going to tell you this story first. Then I'm going to talk about why some of the things that the person in the story is causing them a problem. And then I'm going to give you the three things that you can do to resolve it if you're running into the same problem as the young lady that I'm going to be talking about today. Okay. So for those of you who have never listen to the All Queens Army, that the episode's being flipped around a little bit. Usually I talk about the issue first, I tell the story second, and then I give you three things that you can do, okay? So we're flipping it a little bit. So stay stay with me, y'all. Be patient with this episode. I am going to be telling a story about a young lady that I recently had a conversation with. Now, at Queens, listen, if this is your first time listening to the All Queens Army podcast, you need to understand that when I tell stories about other people's situations, it is totally anonymous. You won't know who I'm talking about because y'all probably don't know the people I know. And on top of that, it is not gossip. These stories are told with love. The issues that other women are going through are issues that I've gone through as well, things that I have also experienced. So this is not gossip. We're not talking about people. We're not judging people. Everything we do on this All Queens Army podcast and on this platform is done with love, support, and light. Okay, that's what this podcast and this platform is all about. It is all about supporting our sisters. It is all about lifting each other up, okay? However, sometimes in order to lift each other up, to help each other evolve, we have to identify some of our shortcomings and we have to identify some of the things that we need to do better. So that's what we do when we tell stories. We're identifying some of the things that are holding us back, some of the limiting beliefs that are holding us back, some of the generational curses that we've been handed down that are holding us back. That's what we're talking about. So please don't ever mistake what we're talking about when we're identifying shortcomings 
as gossip or judgment or anything like that. There's nothing negative about this podcast. Everything is love. Everything is light. Everything is healing and growth. Okay, so Queens, with that being said, I have to say that because there's some new um, there's some new listeners, and I want to set the record straight. All of my old head queens who've been around for a minute, y'all already know the deal, okay? All right. So let's go, queens. Let me tell you this story about this young lady. Beautiful, beautiful queen. So goddamn talented. Like, I literally watch her talents in awe, all right? So she is gainfully employed. <laughs> like, she has a job, and she is a mom. However, right now, she's going through some financial struggles, right? And we've all been there, okay? Some of us may even be in that situation now when when basically (laughs) you still got a little bit more month left at the end of your money, (laughs) meaning you are living above your means or something has happened financially in your life that has kind of turned your finances upside down or something unexpected or just something that you couldn't handle. And now you've put yourself in debt or got behind in some bills, you know, just basically finances have gotten turned around or gotten out of out of your control. All right. So she's struggling financially. She's in a little bit of a bind and she needs to figure out how to either increase her salary, make more money, um, get a little side hustle. Like she has to do something right in order to to make some more money so that ends can meet. Okay, so when she talked to me about this issue and she confided in me and she told me about Um, what was going on and what had caused the problem and why she got into the situation that she's in. And then she was trying to figure out like what to do. Like how does she plan for digging herself out of this hole? What are some of the things that she can do? So the first thought I had as she was telling me the story and telling me what was going on was, what the hell? Like why is she asking me these questions? Because this queen has so many fucking talents, y'all. So many talents. So let me tell you guys some of the talents that this queen has. She is a caterer and chef, okay? Now, not professionally, but baby baby girl can cook her ass off, okay? She burns in the kitchen, honey. And she has done some catering events for like some smaller catering jobs for it, like in people's homes. I think she did a Mother's Day brunch. Um, she did a couple things, right? So she can cook, cook, honey. She also bakes. I mean, baby girl can throw down in the kitchen. So that's one of the talents that I've observed her having. I've also observed her being a, an event planner and a coordinator. Baby, she can plan the shit out of an event and she's super duper creative. I mean, she decorates and everything is so beautiful. So I've watched that talent as well. Here's another talent that I've watched her. She can actually build and set up websites. Now, she ain't no WordPress guru or nothing like that. She's not super duper technical, but she can get you a website up and running that is visually appealing (laughs) to the eye and it worked, okay? So I've watched her do that. The last thing that I've watched her do is landscaping and gardening. Now, I'm not talking about landscaping where you pulling up in somebody's driveway with a goddamn pickup truck and um <laughs> and all that, right? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about planting a garden, tending to a garden, you know, making the plants look really, really, really pretty. She's so freaking good at that. Bottom line is artistically and visually, she has a gift. She has a gift. She has a gift for creating beautiful things, okay? She has a gift to cook. So she has these talents and she probably has even more, some that I don't know about. But these are the ones that I have observed, that I have seen with my own eyes. I've seen her working them. I've seen her create. I've seen her, and I have literally stood back and admired her talent and thought that it was a beautiful thing. So these are the things that I'm thinking about as she's telling me about this financial issue. And the first thought that's going through my mind is, baby, I can think of four talents that you have off the top of my head. Monetize those goddamn talents, honey, and make ends meet right? Get your hustle on, get out there and create a business. I mean, baby, you could build a website. You could be a caterer. Like, you know, why aren't you utilizing these talents to make ends meet? Like you you had, you already have it. And that's one of the things that I want to share, right? God has already given us everything that we need to overcome any fucking problem that comes up in our lives, anything that comes up in your life that could be a problem, there's already a solution. It's already been written and you already have it in you. It's just a matter of whether or not you're going to dig into yourself deep enough to pull that shit out when you need it. Okay. So this is all of the stuff that's going through my mind as she's talking and I'm listening to her. And when she paused for my response, 
Of course, that's the first thing I laid on her. Girl, you got all these talents, honey. Just go out there and hustle and do what you got to do and make that money, baby. You know, get your grind on. That was my reaction. I probably came on a little too strong, right? <laughs> Could y'all imagine with me and all of my intensity <laughs> and all of my excitement? But um, but I meant it from the bottom of my heart because I look at her and I am so in awe of the things that she's able to do and create, right? I think she is a boss bitch. Like, I think she the shit. Oh, y'all, I said bitch. I'm sorry. Queen, queen, honey, queens, we queens. All right. So anyways, um, that was my response to her was, babe, you got so many talents. Choose one. Like, choose your favorite one, choose the one that you enjoy doing and make it a business, right? And go out there and market yourself and hustle it up and let people know that you have this talent, right? I mean, I've seen you cook for people um, and, and doing catering jobs, do a little bit more of it, like put it out there, you know? So here's where this story gets funny, uh, what gets tricky. So as soon as I tell her that she has the talents, go out there and hustle, her whole body language changed. Her whole demeanor changed. And she went from this confident person who's telling me, hey, here's what I'm what I'm going through. I need some help. What's your advice? To now shoulders are slumped and she's looking down and she's like, yeah, I know, but I can't, I can't do those things. And I was like shocked. I'm like, the hell you mean you can't? Like, what's the problem? I've seen you do them all. You can clearly. So what's the problem? And she gave me all kinds of excuses, y'all. She gave me excuse about needing a steady and dependable income. She gave me excuses she doesn't have enough time. She gave me excuses that she doesn't have the money to start up any of those things as businesses. She gave me even more excuses, but I'll stop there. And I was heartbroken. I was heartbroken because I'm looking at this woman. And I see so much talent, so much God-given talent. I see a million-dollar business surrounding her aura, but she doesn't. She, She doesn't think that she can do it. And she doesn't think she can do it because she doesn't have time, because she has kids and she needs a steady and dependable income, because she doesn't have money to start the business. And I thought about it. And I said, God damn, we make so many excuses about why we can't dig ourselves out of the problems and the challenges and the issues that come up. And really, it's not the excuses that are true. The excuses are just lies that you tell yourself to sell yourself that you can't do it. And I know that sounds crazy, but you're literally selling yourself this shortcoming. You're literally using the excuse to justify why you're not doing what you know you should. That's all excuses are. It's it's literally to justify to yourself why you're not doing what you know you should be doing. You're literally giving, you're telling yourself a lie. That's all an excuse is. You're telling yourself a lie to justify your actions of not doing what you should be doing. And it broke my heart. It absolutely broke my heart. It made me realize that there's so many times that we literally hold ourselves back. And in Queens, I know I talk about this topic a lot, like holding ourselves back, but it's because that's what we do. We have so many talents. We have so many things that we could be doing. We have so much that's inside of us, but we hold ourselves back for so many different reasons. So at that point, I got really, really curious as to what was really behind the excuses, because we know that no time, no money and needing dependable income is bullshit. So what's the real reason that you're not really giving it your all? What's the real reason that you're not utilizing the talents that you have to get yourself out of the pickle that you're in? What's the real reason? So I kept digging and digging and talking more and talking more to her about like, why are you not doing this? Okay. Your mind is so closed off to your mind is closed. So I want to know why you have a closed mind when you have a million dollar mind. I want to know why you've closed your mind off when it's worth a million dollars. Your talents are worth a million dollars, but you've allowed your mind to close it, to close that door of opportunity for you. Why have you why are you doing that? I was so freaking curious, okay? So, here's the thing. Here's what I found in in going deeper into that conversation with her. 
the more we talked about why she's really not starting and we kept digging and digging, it's like peeling back the layers layers of an onion. The, the excuses are just the beginning layers. But as you keep questioning more into the excuses, you start to uncover other things. And to make this story a little shorter, because if I told y'all like, all the whole conversation, we'd be here for two hours, okay? But the bottom line is that she was afraid. And let me tell you why she was afraid. Now, again, these are all things that we uncovered in our conversation. She was she was living in fear. She was living in fear because she had started a business before with her catering and it didn't succeed. It kind of it fell apart. She got some bad reviews on one of her catering jobs and it just scared her to death and she never wanted to do it again. Okay, but once I understood what happened with that catering job, it really wasn't that she had bad reviews. It was just that she didn't prepare properly. And why didn't she prepare properly? Well, she was a new entrepreneur, new business owner, knew it knew when what she was trying to do, and she made a mistake. And that's just how it is sometimes, right? When you're starting a business, you're starting something new, you're trying to venture into a new territory, something you've never done before. Well, you're going to make mistakes. But unfortunately, so many of us, especially African-Americans, we're so strict on each other that we don't allow each other to make a mistake. Right. If you if you try to if you try to support a black owned business and you have a bad experience, oh, you get baby, y'all be blasting people. OK, not understanding that most of us don't know how to start a business, don't know how to run a business. So we're just learning trial and error. All right. So that's what happened. Right is that she tried to venture out into starting her own business and using her own talents, but she got kicked in the stomach because she made a mistake and her business fell apart. And she just felt like she didn't have the confidence anymore. She didn't know, she didn't feel like she was good at it. She didn't feel like she was worthy of it. She just didn't feel like she could do it. So she closed her mind off to that as a resolution to fix her financial issue because she had failed at that already. So her mind was closed. Okay. And so once I understood that, I really saw what she was up against. Okay. It was a confidence thing. It was one of those opportunities. It was one of those moments where, you know, you have to dust yourself off and pick yourself up and try again. Okay. And so that's why I say, you know, once you close your mind off to a certain idea, you create limitations for yourself. You create, you, you're living in fear. You begin to use patterns of behavior to prevent yourself from going down the same path. You start to tell yourself lies and excuses about why you're not able to do what you are able to do. The thing about the situation that she was in is the bottom line is you learn from that mistake and you get your ass up and you dust your butt off and you keep on going, okay? And you try it again. Try it again. The one person that you made a mistake from does not, does, don't, don't give them that much power, okay? Don't give the one person that you made a mistake with that much power to stop your motherfucking destiny, okay? You don't know what if it was in, what if God put you here to be the biggest goddamn caterer ever seen in Baltimore, Maryland, okay? Ever seen internationally, globally, what if that was your destiny? What if that was what you were put here to do? What if you were put on this planet and you were manifested here on this earth to share your beautiful food with the world? Like, what if you were supposed to make the dish that created a whole new genre of dishes, right? Now, I don't, I'm not a caterer. I don't know all that about food, so I might not be using the right words, but y'all know what I mean. Like, what if you were supposed to be a trailblazer? But you allow a mistake and one person's opinion about you and about your talent to completely close your mind to ever going down that path again. Let me tell y'all something. That fear shit is real. Okay? Fear is real as a mug, y'all. And I'm going to say that because once you allow fear to set in, it closes off your mind. It, it doesn't allow you to be open-minded. It doesn't allow you to learn. It doesn't allow you to evolve. It doesn't allow you to, you know, look at the mistakes that you've made, make some tweaks and get up and keep going. It is debilitating. You have to let go of it. Okay. So after our conversation and we got down to that, we really started talking and she started to feel better because I told her, girl, you are a beast in the kitchen. Okay, I mean, you a beast at some of these other things, but if cooking is what you love, do it. 
Do it. Start that business back up. Don't worry about the one person that you made a mistake with. And if it really weighs that heavy on your heart that you made a mistake in your catering job and that this person may have a certain opinion about your business or you think this person may have, um, you know, be talking about your business to other people, write her a letter. You know what I mean? Write her a letter and apologize and explain what happened and ask her to give you a second chance. Do something pro bono for her to make it up to her. You know, if that's really what's weighing on your heart, try to fix it. And if she don't respond or she ain't open to a baby, let her ass the fuck go. Move on. <laughs> Dust it off. You made a mistake. Okay. So we talked about it. And afterwards, she was all smiles and she was very excited. And it's so great because a few days ago, she actually sent me her um her new logo. So she's working on her new logo because she's gonna be launching her catering business again. And honey, it made my heart do a uh, uh, do the salsa, honey. It made my heart smile because here's the thing, Queens. We literally have my, uh, here's the thing, Queens. Our minds are worth a million dollars. Okay. Our minds are worth a million dollars and our talents are worth a billion. Listen, we were put here. We were put here to share our talents with the world. We were put here with different gifts. Everybody has a different gift. Everybody has something special within them. Once you identify what that thing is, it is absolutely meant for you to share it with the world. That's what your gift is all about. The gift that you have is not supposed to be held to you. Like you ain't supposed to be gifting yourself. You're supposed to share your gift with the world. And when you share your gift with the world, not only do you feel happiness and fulfillment, and you feel like you're living in your purpose and you feel like, you know, you're enjoying what you do and you like who you are and you're making a difference in your life. It, you're making a difference in the lives of someone, even if it's just your spouse, even if it's just your family, even if it's just like whoever it is, that circle can be as small as you want it to be or as large as the world. OK, but once you identify exactly what it is that you're supposed to be doing, baby, it is life changing. And one of the other things that I wanted to point out is sometimes the universe will create challenges in your life to try to redirect you if you're going down the wrong path. If you're going down a path that wasn't intended for your life plan, if you're going down a path that's eventually going to take you into a really yucky space, meaning you're, let's just say, for example, you're dating someone who, if you keep dating them by by next year, they're going to they gonna drain you financially. Okay, sometimes the universe can see that you're on the wrong path and that if you keep going down that path, your situation will only worsen and your life will get harder and your challenges will be more difficult. And sometimes the universe says, oh, honey, wait, no. And it starts throwing up red flags, okay? And it starts giving you signs. And sometimes red flags and signs look like challenges. They look like challenges. They look like issues. They look like closed doors. They look like problems. And when you experience those, once you start trying to figure out how to overcome the challenges, that's when the opportunities and the ideas and the open-mindedness come into play. That's when the open-mindedness comes into play. Because think about it, you cannot receive answers or direction from God or the universe, whatever you believe in, if you've closed your mind off already. See, this young lady has a million dollar business worth of talent and in her mind and she in debt and she's struggling financially. So if she would actually just open her mind and stop living in fear, she could actually create a business that she would never have to worry about money ever a goddamn again. Okay. But because you're living in fear because you're living with limitations, because you're you're not moving forward, because you're afraid, because you made a mistake or you, you know, jacked it up the first time. What happens is if you keep going down the path that you're going and living in fear, you end up in an even worse situation. So sometimes the universe is just trying to shake you to say, hello, hello, you're in this situation. You have this problem, but you have the solution. You've just got to look into yourself and you've got to dig and you got to overcome some of the, uh, some of the the problems that you've put up. Sometimes it's just us in our own way. Most of the time, it's just us in our own way. 
Okay. And in that situation, it was her in her own way. Like literally all she had to do was decide that she wasn't going to allow one failed attempt at starting a a business to prevent her from the possibility of having a million dollar business and never having the problem that she has today ever again. It's all in a decision. Literally, it's in a decision. Okay, but you have to open your mind and stop living in fear. Fear creates a closed mind. Okay, once you live in fear, once you live with limitations, once you see once you see all of the things that you can't do, once you start thinking about how things can't be done, what can't be done, like literally once you do that, your mind gets closed to more opportunities. And and more and your your mind gets closed to opportunities, your mind gets closed to ideas, your mind gets closed for carriage. Your mind gets closed and now you can't see how to get yourself out of the situation. And that's a problem. You have to keep your mind open. And an open mind is not full of fear. There is no fear in open-mindedness. Open-mindedness is all about faith. Open-mindedness is all about confidence. Open-mindedness is knowing that you are the the shit baby and you're going to figure this out. Open-mindedness is knowing that you can depend on yourself. Open-mindedness is knowing that you have all the tools and resources inside of you to get yourself out of the situation, to make your life better, to find what you want, to live the life that you choose. That's what open-mindedness does, okay? And that's why I say your mind is worth a million dollars. Your mind can either put you in debt or make you rich. Your mind can either perceive that you're happy or make you miserable. Your mind is literally the controller of all things for you. Seriously. If you guys don't know that, you guys really need to keep tuning into the All Queens Army podcast, okay? Also, you want to feed your mind. You want to feed your mind with, with positivity, with belief, with tons of good educational resources, okay? So that you can keep it moving. Your mind is a muscle. So if you're not using it, if you're literally just letting it be mush, it's going to be mush. All right. So at any rate, um, I talked a lot about her story and I I am excited to say that today, yeah, she has relaunched her business and she is on her way, honey. And I'm very, very excited about where she is today. A little further down the line, I'm going to share her um, business page. Like once she gets everything totally up and running, I'm going to share that information with you guys. So hopefully um, you guys can support this beautiful young queen. Okay. So I want to give you guys three things that you can do to make sure you keep an open mind, okay? Three different things that you can do, okay? So here's three things that you can do to ensure that you have an open mind, okay? Because again, queens, if you close your mind, okay, number one, you're closing it out of fear of something. It could be fear of change. It could be because you want to continue to have a limiting belief. It could be because that's what your parents taught you. It could be because that's what your environment shaped you out to be. It could be a ton of different things, right? But you need to keep an open mind because open-mindedness is how the universe communicates with you, gives you new ideas, teaches you things, allows you to grow, allows you to evolve, and ultimately allows you to become the person that you were put here to become. And let me tell you something. If you're preventing yourself from growing into the woman that you're supposed to become, I guarantee you, you're not happy. Okay? Closed-mindedness also creates misery. You wind up being unhappy right? Because you're not allowing yourself to be yourself. You're not allowing the universe to shape you, to mold you, and to teach you who into who you're supposed to ultimately be. Listen, we were manifested here on this planet for us to grow and for us to learn. If you're not growing and you're not learning and you're not evolving and you're literally just staying the same, I guarantee you, you're not happy. You're literally not happy, okay? So anyway, three things that you can do to ensure that you keep your mind open um, or to start to open your mind, okay? Three things that you can do to try to keep your mind as open as possible, all right? Here's thing number one. Always be willing to learn, okay? A lot of times it's natural for us to stick to what we know, what we've been taught, what we believe, okay? But what we know, what we've been taught, and what we believe is literally only based on what is around us in like our immediate environment, 
Okay, so that's all we really know. You have to be willing to learn outside of just your own experiences, learning from other people, learning from other people's experiences, learning to see things in in a different perspective, learning other cultures, learning other people's thought processes, learning other people's perspective and perceptions, learning about historical things, learning about things that you've never seen, done, been, or know. Okay, that's how you keep an open mind, being willing to learn, being willing to see things that you've never seen before, being willing to try things you've never tried before, being willing to experience things you've never experienced before. And let me tell you the number one reason why people aren't willing to learn is because people are uncomfortable and scared to try something new because they don't know what to expect, because they don't know if they'll be good at it or if they'll be shitty at it, because they don't know if people are going to talk about them and say something negative about them. So a lot of times people hold themselves back from learning because they're too afraid of public opinion and judgment about how they're doing the new thing. And y'all know how I feel about that. To hell with people. Don't worry about them. Don't you dare let someone's opinion or what someone says or how crazy you might look doing the new thing hold you back. Because that new thing, that new thing that you're being open-minded about, baby, might be worth a million. You never know. Okay, here's thing number two. Read more. Oh, queens, I read. I read, I read, I read. I read a lot. I read a lot and I watch a lot of YouTube videos, okay? I, I, you literally watch at least one YouTube video a day. And I do read a lot. I read a lot of blogs, a lot of self-help blogs, a lot of positivity, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. It's just what I do, okay? Reading feeds your mind. Reading gives you an opportunity to choose what you want to put into your brain, what you want to put into your peripheral, what you want to focus on, okay? Because see, our society will have you focusing on dumb shit, gossip, drama, issues, problems, politics, fear, this, that. Those are the things that it'll put into your peripheral, which will shape how you see the world. It'll shape what you think you know, okay? I mean, half of the time you watching media outlets and news and all of this other shit who's telling you how to feel about things and you don't even realize that you're being taught and programmed to feel a certain way or to have a certain opinion. You don't even realize it, okay? So you choose what you want to know. You choose what you want to read. You choose what you want to learn. You choose what you want your brain to focus on. You choose the emotions that you want to have, okay? And then you read the things according to what you choose. And that's what you feed your mind. Your mind is a muscle. And if you're not exercising it by reading and by listening to positive things and being around positive people and being around positive conversations, if you're not doing that, you're literally, your mind is fat, like an out of shape ass woman or man. Okay. Literally. It's like you feeding your mind a whole bunch of junk food all day and being lazy. And that is a closed mind. Okay. So thing number two you can do is read more. Okay. Let's move on to thing number three. One of my favorites, okay? Thing number three is to approach things that you don't understand or don't agree with, with curiosity. Approach it with curiosity as opposed to approaching it with judgment. Approach it with curiosity as opposed to approaching it with criticism. Because that is our initial reaction and our initial response. And let me tell you something. When you approach things with judgment and you approach things with criticism, that's your fear talking. Those are your insecurities speaking because basically someone is challenging, like someone else is doing something or something is happening that's challenging your beliefs. You don't believe what they're doing. You don't agree with what they're doing. You don't like what they're doing because your beliefs are set up a different way. Who gives a shit? Let people do what they want. Let people be who they are. Let people act how they want to act, okay? You don't have to judge it. You don't have to criticize it. You don't have to have a negative reaction to it. You don't have to care. Okay, but if you're if you're trying to practice keeping an open mind, what you can do is instead of allowing yourself to go into a critical space or judgmental space, what you can do is allow yourself to go into a curious space where you say, instead of judging, you say, hmm, I wonder why she does this. Right. So think back to the story that I just told you about the queen who was having the issue with the money. Okay, and when she started telling me all of the different excuses as to why she couldn't start these businesses or utilize her talents to, um, or utilize her talents to monetize them, to get herself out of this financial bond, right? I didn't go into judging her and criticizing her. I went into being curious, curious. I wanted to know more. 
I want to understand a little bit more about why you're holding yourself back. I want to understand a little bit more about why you believe that you can't do this, right? I could have gone into judging her and criticizing her and be like, here she go, another one of these chicks who just want to complain, but she don't want no resolution, right? But I didn't. I got curious, okay? And it took me a long time. And again, sometimes I still respond in criticism and judgment because remember, Queens, I'm talking to myself too. I'm not perfect. Okay, this is a conversation for all of us. This is us having a conversation together. Okay, so sometimes I do it too. But what I'm really trying to practice is not doing it, right? Not doing it. I don't want to do that. I want to go into it curious because I want to understand. Okay, maybe I've never experienced something that she's experienced. And if she tells me why she's holding herself back, now I understand it, right? See, Being curious about why people are doing what they're doing creates compassion, okay? It creates compassion. And once you you show compassion, you actually create a bond with the person. You actually can have a conversation with the person because now you can relate to them. You can understand them in a different way, all right? As opposed to if you lead in with a judgmental or or criticizing energy, now you're putting a barrier between you and the person and you can't connect with them. And listen, I know we ain't trying to connect with every goddamn body and we don't need a bond with everybody and I get it. But if you're not trying to connect or bond, then you shouldn't have an opinion or give a shit what somebody else is doing or how they live or, or what they, or anything about them anyway. Okay. So if you're going to have a reaction or an emotion about what someone is doing, if you're going to have an opinion, if you're going to say something about it anyway, don't let it be the judgment and the criticism, because again, that's closed minded. That's you living in your own beliefs and in your own limitations and in the way you you perceive life and in the way you think life should be and, and making it seem like everybody else has to be that way. That's the opposite of an open mind. So if you approach it with a curious mind and you say, hmm, interesting, definitely not the way I would do it, but I wonder why she did it that way. Hmm, interesting, definitely not the route I would have chosen, but I wonder what's going on in her life that made her choose that route so that you understand as opposed to trying to push your thoughts, your beliefs on someone else. Okay. So with that being said, Queens, I hope I wasn't all over the place with this episode um, because I feel all over the place because I switched how I was doing things a little bit with this episode. But listen, honey, sometimes we have to do things the way it need to be done. Okay. And it was on my heart to flip it a little bit today. So with all of that being said, Queens, I'm going to end this episode on that note. And I want you Queens to know that your mind is worth a million dollars dollars. Okay. Your mind is your freedom. Your mind is your peace. Your mind is literally the navigator of your life and how you experience it. Okay. So keep in mind, Queens, when problems arise and challenges arise and things come up in your life, a lot of times that is the universe trying to redirect you to a different path, trying to show you how to overcome some of the speed bumps. It is the universe trying to help you overcome yourself being in your own way. Okay. Cause a lot of times we're the ones who are creating these problems that we're, <laughs> that we're in. We're creating the problem because we have a limiting belief or because we're not digging deep enough or because we're not holding ourselves accountable or because we're not pushing ourselves to our full potential. We're creating problems and challenges. And the universe is just saying, Hey, I'm trying to get you to knock these walls down that you've put up to protect yourself. But really, when you have to protect yourself, you're protecting yourself out of fear. And when you start to protect yourself, you start to close your mind. And when you start to close your mind, you create misery in your life and you create more problems and you start going down paths. And the longer you stay on the wrong path, queen, the bigger the problem gets. Okay, so open your mind, queens. Your your, your mind is worth a million dollars. Knock down the walls, open your minds, free yourself. You are resourceful. You are bomb. You have a shitload of talents. Utilize them. Live off of them. Like literally make them come to life. Okay, so with that being said, queens, I am out. I love you, queens, so much. I hope you love me the same. Um, We will definitely be back with a new episode. So make sure you go and subscribe, queens, okay? All right, I love you, queens. I will talk to you very, very, very soon. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at All Queens Army or on Facebook at All Queens Army if you have not connected with us there. I will talk to you soon and hope you all have an amazing day. Love you, queens. 
Thank you for listening to the All Queens Army podcast. If you want to connect with Breezy Time and the All Queens Army, be sure to follow them on IG and Facebook at All Queens Army. Or head over and check out the All Queens Army YouTube channel. Until next time.